that if prices keep rising at the same rate between now and 2048, by the way, 2048, that's a few decades, isn't it? Is that still in your lifetime? Yes, it is still in your lifetime. The median house would cost a massive, tell me the number please, five million dollars. What please? Five million dollars. Who are the parents in the room? How many of you fear for your children? Not being able to afford real estate. Is there something you can do about that? What is something you can do about it to make sure that they don't suffer? <laughs> Buy as much as you can. Yeah. It's the only way you can save. And if I could come and kind of do a deal where you were buying it today, securing prices today that didn't need to be settled in 10 years' time, do you think some of that could be for your kids? Because your kids would have an opportunity to settle on properties in 10 years' time at today's prices. What a gift that would have been for them. How many of you are thinking about doing that? Yeah, would that be awesome? Okay, cool. So, these figures back up the real estate agent mantra. I want you all, every single person, by the way, if you're in the room, say, I. All right, read this with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Now is a great time to buy. When's a great time to buy? Now. What's the only thing that's even better than now? Yesterday. Yesterday, that's correct. It's the land value that goes up. In fact, the physical structure you put onto your block of land actually wears out and depreciates. What actually appreciates is the land. So the more, the, la the more land that you have, the more the value of your property portfolio will grow over the long term. All right, let's look at a graph of residential land in Australia. So. The red bars represent prices in 2001. The green bars represent what land prices became in 2011. And there's something I haven't shared with you, and that is when we value vacant land, we, we price it per square meter. Yep. Vacant land is priced per square meter. So we've got residential land value, price per square meter in our capital cities. And so we've got Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, ah, there she is, Adelaide, oh, Perth, and Hobart. Okay, so uh, for the viewers at home, I'm getting excited about Adelaide because we're in Adelaide. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm not saying buy in Adelaide, we just happen to be in Adelaide. I just, I just want to make that very clear. Okay, so we've got, so let's have a look at it. Adelaide in December 2001, vacant land, residential land, was priced at $125 per square metre. And then 10 years later, it became $480 per square metre. Sydney went from 316 to 533. Melbourne went from 132 to 400. Brisbane went from $118 per square metre to 398. Perth went from 146 to 527. And Hobart went from 49 to 225. Yes, okay. Melbourne went, grew by 203%. In other words, Melbourne tripled in value. Brisbane more than tripled. Adelaide more than tripled. In fact, Adelaide was getting up to quadrupling. Perth more than tripled as, as, as well at 261%. And Hobart grew by 359%. However, that seems like a lot in comparison. But Hobart was starting from a much lesser base to start with. Yeah. And even when it grew at that rate, it's still far cheaper than everywhere else. So I don't think it's an indication of anything, really. Okay? And given the, um, the other th things that I've shared with you, I'm not suggesting that you buy in Tasmania yet. So, as we look at that table, what is the one that's lagged? In the last 10 years. Sydney has lagged. Now, what did you see earlier that whenever a city lagged in a 10 year period, what happened in the next yeah, decade? Yeah, it jumped. It did a massive catch up. That being the case, if the, in the last 10 years, because this is up to last year, right? End of, end of last year, so this is very recent. 
How many of you realize that there's potential for massive capital growth in Sydney, given that it's only down 69% in the last decade? Yeah. Yeah. So, the other thing I'll share is, is this with you. Sydney has historically led the Australian property market. So for Sydney to lag, there's another, in addition to everything else I've told you so far, if the other cities have gone ahead, then Sydney is ready to go. It's its turn, it, it's, it is its time. And for that reason, to cut a long story short, we personally believe that, the, that one of the greatest opportunities for investment in real estate right now is in Sydney, and other New South Wales specific hotspots. Let's talk about the forces that drive land value up faster. Number one, land is scarce. Sure, we've got a lot of land in Australia, but all of that stuff in the Middle East mostly desert. And most people choose to live where? On the, on the outside, yeah, on the coastline. In other words, we have the majority of people concentrating their, their, where they reside to just a few locations where the density is a lot more concentrated, okay? Because that's where all the infrastructure is and the lifestyle and all those sorts of things, okay? And they tend to be in the major capital cities or in proximity of our major capital cities, okay? Now, secondly, homeowners are happy to pay extra for land. Why? Because they can start with a vacant block of land as a blank canvas, and they can build their own one that they can call it of their design, of their choosing. The other thing that you should know is people are now living on smaller block sizes because of the demand, and there are parts of Melbourne where the permitted square meter size of a block of land is as little as 160 square meters. People who live in those places sleep standing up. Because <laughs> then they can have a four bedroom house, yeah? <laughs> so, okay. Now, I don't know how you survive 160 square meters. Um, I actually have the pleasure of actually working from home and I have a different building at home as my office at home. I go down the park, go through the garden, and there's my office. And even though I'm the only person who works in my home office, I think my office alone has got my hobbies and all those sorts of things in the office as well. Um, I reckon that's bigger than 160 square meters of spot silk. So I don't know. Anyway, that's quite scary. Would you agree? Yeah. But it does prove the point of land, uh, how much in how much uh, value is in land, yeah, or how much demand there is for land. Now, the fourth point. This is the this is the main point I wanted to make to you today. Major developers and who please? And who please? Who are the strategic investors? Ah, you guys are land banking. What are you guys doing? Bank, bank, bank. Land banking. How many of you would like to know more about land banking?